So the evidence that's accumulated, particularly in the last 20 or 30 years, is fairly persuasive that the climate is changing and that we are the cause of it. Sea level is rising, the temperature is increasing, mountain glaciers are retreating, sea ice in the summertime in the Arctic is receding and so on. Now, none of this evidence is completely unequivocal and if you want to be a lawyer about it, you can attack it. But taken together, it's a fairly persuasive case. Now, on the other hand, when you try to project forward into the future, you have to also rely on climate models. They have great difficulties and they give answers that don't agree with each other. Most climate scientists, like me, uh, would argue that there's a large uncertainty going forward. And it is precisely for that reason that we have to treat this problem as an exercise in risk assessment. And what do you do when you assess risk? You look at probabilities. And unfortunately, the probabilities are fairly broad, but they encompass fairly benign outcomes on the one hand, and really quite uh, scary ones on the other hand, and the median is somewhere in between the two. On the benign side, um, I think if the globe warms two degrees, uh, that society will just adapt to that. Now, um, if the world warms uh, according to sort of the upper ranges of the projections currently, uh, then you're seeing massive dislocations. And one of the big things is sea level rise. The last IPCC report was very conservative about that. It didn't really account for the melting of the ice caps in Greenland and Antarctica, but if Greenland melts, and it has before, you're talking about 22 feet of sea level rise, that can be really, uh, I think that would have to be categorized as catastrophic. Human beings as a species have dealt with severe climate change. The ice age cycles all happened within um, the time that humans existed as a species. But of course, um, there were far fewer of us, and if the climate changed, typically you just moved. Today, we're kind of maxed out on the carrying capacity, or maybe not quite there, but certainly closer to that point than we were 100,000 years ago. And uh, if the Middle East gets drier and there are water shortages, um, rapidly things start to degenerate and you have a recipe for war and so forth, and of course famine and that. That's what I think uh, the people who look at this from a political science point of view are worried about, and certainly our defense department is worried about war as a consequence of pressures being put on society by climate change. If people demand proof, they're not going to get it. And let's be fair about that. I don't know anybody in my field who argues that we're going to prove anything. Uh, I think the evidence that the world is warming up is pretty strong now. The evidence that we're responsible for the warming over the last 30 years or so is also pretty strong, but nothing is perfect. And um, you just have to look at this as an exercise in how do you deal with an uncertainly quantified risk. Uh, we can't be certain our house is going to burn down, but we buy fire insurance. You have to look at it rationally. No, you shouldn't panic and, and think of this as an apocalypse but you should look at the problem in a cold, rational way, and society has to decide how much they're willing to spend to mitigate the risk, and that's a tricky question. In all scientific disciplines that I know about, there are always scientists who disagree with the consensus, and that's a good thing, because that helps drive the science forward, right? There are serious uh, people in the medical profession who don't believe that HIV causes AIDS. You know, they're, they're people who doubt some of the basic tenets of relativity. They're, they're, they're all over the place, there are doubters, and that's good. But on the other hand, the public should not, if they're going to assess risk, uh, shouldn't put all their money on the outliers. It's not a, a wise strategy.